John 17, verse 3 and 4. Jesus Christ. Man of you bong kisong koron amin kanam nuti weke afu kolong demi nam kanam bong in Jesus Christ. Our first Bible lesson was derived from the revelation of Saint John the Divine, chapter 14, verse 7, saying with a loud voice, "Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that has that made heaven and earth and the sea." the fountains of the waters. Peace in the name of the Lord Jesus. Our second lesson is recorded in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, reading at verses, reading from verse 9 to 12. After this man are therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our, our debts, and we forgive our debtors in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. A golden text is drawn from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 17, verse 3 to 4. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brethren, you have heard what is now, that we are enjoined to fear God, honor Him, and worship Him. And this command is given to us all, fear Him, the way we talk, the way we move, the way we eat, in all that we do. We must at all times, in all our living, aim at making all and sundry to know that this is the time that God be honored and feared, that this is the time for God to be glorified. This is the time when everyone must be subject and in total reverence unto God. Because the, even the word that we speak constitutes God. And therefore, we must take cognizance of this in our speeches and in all our daily behaviors. So, Mara was, he did a mara was, and I'm up to Moose. 
Brethren, our duty constitutes to reverence God, to worship Him, and cause others to do the same, that we may bring to the knowledge of man what God is, that we may bring to the understanding of all that God is in everything. And therefore, if we declare our love for God, we must in likewise love all his creations. For if we have honor and reverence unto his works, then we have given same to him. If we love the man that we see, then have we loved God. If we love the creations, then have we loved the creator. If you see a man, uh, if you've not seen a man, and you've seen his creations, then if you would love those creations, it means you love him. If you would reverence and honor those creations of his, it means you have honored and reverenced him. If you would respect his words and uh, without seeing him, then you have respected the man who spoke these words in like vain. We must at all times reverence God by his speech, by, uh, uh, by reverencing his words and respecting his words, our fellow human beings, the creations of God. Like in faraway India, it is reported that every creation is being worshipped. The ants, the elephants, the cow, the rats, all the creatures are being worshipped as deities because they know that these are but multi-forms of God, the Creator, because every creation is a form of the Creator. Therefore, brethren, if we say we love God, we must in turn love all his creations. If we say we fear and reverence him and respect him, we must do same to all his creations. Because it is not possible for us to say that we worship God and yet dishonor his own creations. So, Brethren, therefore, we should honor, reverence, and hallow God, the Creator, as we do same to His creations. If you love the day, realize that that love is not on just the day, but unto He who had given the day. If you will hallow a day, then the hallowing is not unto the day per se, but unto He who has given the day. In everything you do, you have to have this consciousness that God the Creator is into everything of His. And all that you see around belong to God, and that is not just belonging to God, but God Himself. Therefore, this abuse your mind at any time of your saying, God is absent of this presence, for God is omnipresent. The ground upon which you stand is not the creation of God, but God in His multiple forms. Wherever you are and whatever you see, that is God you are seeing. The very words that proceed from your mouth is nothing but God the Father. And therefore, if you would hallow the words from your mouth, saying you are doing unto God, and putting sin to practice is a respect, not only unto the word, but unto God 
Kofi is the word that proceeds from your very mouth. Therefore, in everything you do, come to this realization that God is found in everything and in every form. And therefore, in your movement, in your utterances, in your interaction, you have to be this conscious. For if you wait to be this conscious, you will not be found one thing in any way. You would commit no sin. You will do nothing evil because you will realize the omnipresence of God. As you came out marching through the streets, you would do so with all amount of reverence. You will not allow any God word to proceed from your mouth, realizing that that you see, the path you are treading, the ground you are, and the very word that proceeds from your mouth constitutes not but God. As we have been enjoined, as it is done on earth, let it be so, as it's done in heaven, let it be so done on earth. What I'm telling you now is that which obtains in heaven. It isn't there. Kaba sekir wori tu te kerito. Hey, mu prai, we keep mu ape, we no ga ni, we di ma ka ni, we ta ga ka ni, o kwa, mu ta ga diolo. Ba ba wo ni ni. Den ke klas ni, a ta ma yo ni de, a yo ni di an ko, bo a ka. Ko de te, a ke ni no lu ke ni, a te to ri bo, a te mo ko ni pa, a to ni pa, a te mo ko de, ya ke te ni ni si, ya ke ko ni ni, ya ke na ki so ke na me ke ni. Yemen man bu fam ko ro di ama ku no wu e wu ya ba si ama no no wu ko mo ma ba si nte mi bi do do mi a fo yo di bo ne ye e me ye de si o me de me ka mo wu se di mi te mi da ne ni na de se se ni san se ni ko nte mi ni ye ni nam ri ni ya ra ba si mo ku ko ni ri ma te ni ri ku ko ko e ni ri ka ni ri mo ga na ku ko ye ke ku e mo ko ti re ke re ko ku Brethren, it is in that God has been non-existent for time, but rather He had been in existence. The problem had been that. Man had never for once consciously reverenced God, nor worshipped Him, nor hallowed His name, nor was conscious of His presence. Hence, with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, He began the teaching to bring man to conscious realization of the omnipresence of the Father. Before you eat, He taught, pray the Father. Before you move, thank the Father. And he taught as well that we pray in this manner, that we hallow the name of the Father, and that we do on earth as it is done in heaven. This was the beginning of bringing the presence to the consciousness of man, and that is when God was being believed to be around man. Therefore, realize that whatever you do to a man, you do unto God. Whatever you give to a man, you give unto God. Not only in humans, but all his creations. Whatever is your relationship with any of his creations, realize that you are relating directly with God, because God of His own essence had created these things. They are all part and parcel of Him. Therefore, if you would worship the tree, you worship God. If you worship the rock, you worship God. If you worship man, you worship God. If you worship the river, you worship in God. Everything you do, you are doing direct to any of the creations of God. You are doing it unto God. Therefore, we should be of this consciousness that we may dawn on us to realize the ever presence of God. That in our words and in our action, we know that at all times we interact directly with God. So, atapantu. Therefore, we have this founded duty to bring God to man's consciousness. We have to reveal God to man. This is our major obligation. Don't worry, 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 don't worry
Brethren, if we would pick this up as a way of living, then we will definitely reap the benefit thereof. Because our duty is to bring God to man and let man realize that God is always with him. Like Philip said to our Lord Jesus the Christ, show us the Father and he shall suffice us. For every statement of Christ, he made reverence to the Father. My Father did, my Father has said this, my Father would do that, my Father has done this, my Father has directed that all the time and at every instance he attributed everything to the Father. Then Philip could bear it no more, he called out to know this very Father, that if only they could know the Father who is able to do all things and at all times, then his departure would mean nothing. So therefore, brethren, if you would come to this realization that God is with you at all times, that the Father is responsible for everything, that the one you see, you are not seen per se, but the Father is seeing the Father in the other creation, then the fear of God will come upon you and upon our children and our children's children, and the world will be changed and we all will begin to reap the benefit of reverencing the uh, name of God, reverencing God and worshipping Him. So, as that promise, let reference be made to our first Bible lesson. Apart from Ponyo Koto, me can worry our John. He was said to be now five or six hours. Then I hear the other question we hear today. Buffet and Avasi. And you want to know your bum. Correct me in a question. And you want to try for an idea, me or Coco, the young song. The young kid among women. Can you have one in Jesus' name? Our first Bible lesson was derived from the revelation of St. John. And you want to know your chapter 13, verse 7. Correct me in a loud voice. Fear God and give glory to Him. Our first Bible lesson was derived from the revelation of St. John the Divine, chapter 14, verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mogula, <laughs> Imagine Brethren, we have heard what is written that we ought fear God and glorify Him, His name, worship Him. Realizing that at every time God is the doer of all things. When we come to this understanding that when we go down in worship, it is He the Father that has gone down in worship, and whatever we say, He is the one speaking and He is the one to hear. 
And they realize, therefore, that when one would ask you of God, never you begin to explain anything, but tell him right away that he is the one beside you, he is the one right in front of you, he is the one talking to you, it is his voice you are hearing, he is the one you are seeing, and then it will dawn upon us that God is all and in all. You will give reverence to the day, you will give reverence to the hour, you will honor the dawn of day, you will respect man, you will honor man, we will realize that whatever you give to a man, you give unto God, and whatever you receive from man, you receive from God. In this way, you will at all times be thankful to God, realizing that God is the doer of all things. If God be the doer of all things and be held responsible for all actions, then we have to realize that God must be in these things. And we have not just come by it by accident. It is a veritable truth that God is all and in all, and therefore, he alone deserves thanks. Brethren, whenever we be truthful, we have glorified him. Whenever we are honest, we have honored him. Whenever we stick to what we had said and ensure the practicalization of all we had said, we glorify him. Whatever we do, when we go glory to ourselves, when we humble ourselves, when we respect ourselves in our utterances and in all our behaviors, we do give this honor and respect to God. <laughs> Brethren, let us not say that we have not seen God, but rather declare the ever presence of God, because the one you see is none other than God. In any of the Christian forms that you see, you are seeing God directly. And if you would hearken to the voice of advice from man, you are hearkening to the advice from God. If you will reject the advice from man, you have rejected the advice from God. So Brethren, it is not our intent to overlabel you. Let reference be made to our second Bible lesson. Our second lesson from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, reading from verse 9 to 12. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, you have heard. Wherever you may be, get yourself involved only in such actions and utterances that when people will see or hear, they know of the truth that you in God do these things and that God is honored or reverence in whatever you say or do.
Brethren, if we will reverence God in all our ways and realize the ever presence of God, we will at all times, being so conscious, do only that which shall glorify and honor Him in our words, in our actions, in our thought patterns. Everything about us shall be towards glorifying God. In, our, in and around us, the way we do things, everything shall be such as shall be glorifying to God. The end result of it shall be that things shall take a new turn for our children that shall then comfort, having seen that God is being reverent in all ways, God's name is being hallowed, not calling on him, a God of this, God of that, come and do this, that, that. No, you don't call the name at random, but with all due honor, with all due respect, with due hallowing of the name, it is called or mentioned. You respect and honor his words. When you remain absolutely truthful, then you are reverencing God. When you are humble in your relations with people, then you are giving due glory and honor to God. This is that which is expected of us now, that our generations to come would have not seen that God is properly reverenced will follow suit. You will realize that anything that is named after God shall be duly respected, proper care shall be taken about it, and it shall be feared and respected. This will be left as a legacy for the incoming generation, and the world would not be in such a chaotic situation as we have it today. And I put it in there. Puni ko ino ama wala ng kima. Ipuni pare sa mga. Ipuni di kere ng. Ipuni di na mintiche. Non hubong. Search of the thing in Bangla. Non hubong. Pautod hubong ay siyempre. Brethren, we must guard a thought that is trained out except towards such targets as shall be seen to glorify and honor God. Our words, our doings, our steps, our feeding, everything about us must be such as is seen by all to glorify God. And in so doing, we shall exalt God, and His glory and honor shall know no bound. <laughs> When God will speak to you through a person, if you will reject the advice of anyone, I will not want to pay attention or listen to any word of advice from a person. Don't you realize that you have dishonored God? Our Lord Jesus Christ taught us clearly that any that would listen to you, listens to him. And he that listens to him, listens to the Father. Or because the words spoken are from the Father. If any would love another, he loves the Father. If any will love him, he loves the Father. Because the Father is the beginning and end of all things. Respect man, for if you respect and honor man, you do that directly to God. If you fear man, you fear God. Amazing so many, Oswana, but you take a decanamu and Avasi. 
Brethren, if you respect a man, you respect God. If you honor a man, you honor God. If you would speak rudely to a man, you're doing so to God. Realize that whatever is your reaction to a man, you are reacting directly to God. And therefore, whatever interaction you have with your fellow man, you are interacting directly with God. Realize this, that if you would honor a man, you are honoring God. <laughs> Brethren, whatever we do with our fellow man, we do it to God. Therefore, it is wrong for one to say, and where is God here? The man, your companion, who is he? Is he not God? God is omnipresent. That is why you have to be of this consciousness that it may guide you in all your living to honor and reverence God. That whatever you do, being so conscious, you will always do that which is pleasing in the sight of God. Because the ill that you've done, you have this honored God. And the good things you've done, you have glorified God. Realize that God is all and in all. And therefore in all your dealings, you must re realize his presence. For God is there and you must be conscious. There must be the conscious realization of the ever presence of God, which will be a propelling force in the way and manner you relate with him and with others. Because when you know that he's present, you will definitely do that which is good. For the movement that you move is taken by him. The speech uttered is set by him. All that you do is done by him. Therefore, before you leave, you give thanks to him. On arrival, you give thanks to him. While the action is going on, you give thanks to him. You need to beckon on him. Tell him of your conscious realization of his presence from time to time and cease not in doing so. For at all times, God must be hallowed, he must be glorified. Brethren, you must practice that which you've seen down here. You must give respect to man, your fellow man, you honor him, you love him, you relate in this manner, realizing that God is here and God is present everywhere. Now, what you've seen down here, if you have two coats, you give to the one that has none. Whatever you have, you share with your fellow man. If you do good, you have honored God. If you do evil, you have disgraced him. You have dishonored him. Therefore, be steadfast in your words, 
whatever you say brings him to pass because in so doing you honor God never you be wavering in or failing to fulfill that which is spoken by you for in so doing by keeping to it you are honoring God the who is the word spoken be mindful of your steps be cautious of where you go where you uh, the way you work the way you talk because in so doing will people realize that God is here Brethren, it is not our intent to be tedious with you. Let reference be made to our golden text. Brethren, our golden text is recorded in St. John's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 3 and 4. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth, and I have finished the work which thou givest me to do in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone <laughs> Brethren, of the truth, like the Athons strip their match, to many there is nothing important about it. But I tell you now, everything important is embedded in the match. Because in the sight of God, it's very, very important. On the 8th of August, 1958, when we marched out to 26, it meant much in the sight of God. And a couple of years now, in a few years that we had remembered to return to Eton Street to repeat the match, now recall the great testimonies received as aftermath of this match because it has glorified God and those unbelieving have come to believe that of the truth we worship God and like today's it has done the same and the town is glorified Cross River State is glorified Nigeria is glorified Africa is glorified the whole world stands glorified because of the truth that is been known that we in God have a being Brethren, do you remember that in the past about four years ago, on days like this, we call oh, where are you? It's on ice. Come and testify. And a couple of people will be out here to testify 
In so doing, God was not being properly honored. But these past three years, imagine the mighty work that they have done. Because it is said, where the carcass eat, the eagle would gather. Because you need to know where it all began. And I remembering to go to we had to ask a question, where did it all start? Getting back there is giving due glory to God. And the way we match commemorating that great match of 1958, the people today ask questions. What is it? What are they all up to? And in so answering the question, God is glorified. Therefore realize that the match itself is glorifying to God. Your interaction with the people is glorifying to God. The songs you sang, the match, the solemn match, the dancing, everything John stands glorifying to God. Therefore, we must at all times seek to render the honor unto God and not unto ourselves. We must give all the honor and glory to God. I said, Tell me, call Yan. I mean, yes, you can. So, when I think it's the eight of these, my two bodies, one of these is on the eight. If by me, God, go for me then. But, this is the democracy. 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 Brethren, since the 8th of August 1958, when we marched out of 8 Eton Street. Physically, I've never been there again. But in spirit, as you've been there, you've seen the way that God is there, God is being glorified, God is being honored. And therefore, whatever you have done there, God is glorified, God is honored. If you are charitable, you see that it moves in cause to give you honor and glory to God. For it will be remembered that on the day they came, then this is what happened. The song you sing, such songs as are life-giving, resuscitating, revitalizing songs. They will remember the day they marched past here. This was the song they rendered, and this is what the song did. And therefore, in so remembering, they also remember God. It brings to their consciousness the presence of God and they who have been forgetful of God will immediately come back to remembrance of Him and become conscious of His presence. Therefore, everything you do, the song you, uh, you render, the dancing, the matching, the gifts that you give are all means and ways of giving you honor to God by bringing to remembrance or conscious recognition of man of the ever presence of God. Go and interrogate to Bakahensha town. Oko to Porako lady, a unit in Hensha. A man might in prophecy. That is the rule. At the case, it's a focus. I'm telling you. I'm not going to die. 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 I'm not going I can never miss community. That's it of God. And it of God. Send me a book. I walk a I crash out of the moon. And it of God. Send me this brotherhood. A sorry man of chance for me to do so when you sit in here. In the whole universe. Could I make a good ball of care? Join a good book. I would do some fun. I want to see that and you can book. But me can Yes, Father. You know, I want to look at Revelation 7. And then I can say, and you must say, we will come out of my medium. Thank you, Father. You know, I remember. I remember. Most of them are typing that they are nothing. 
Porque a minha é que eu não vou, eu 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 vou, Clearly to mankind. Remember that on that very day, 8th of August 1958, a brother from Henshaw Town, but resident in Port Harcourt, gave a prophecy. There was a revelation that day that the 8th of August was the day that our Lord Jesus the Christ was revealed to the entire world when God made that declaration this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased it was on that same day that John the Baptist administered baptism on our Lord Jesus the Christ it was on the same day 8th of August that it pleased the Father to cause the brotherhood world for the very first time to adorn herself with a white garment and also to take a great match into the street fulfilling that prophecy seen about 2,000 years ago by John the Divine in Revelation 7 and therefore, anything that which is done and written through Revelation 7 has no more questions to ask. But will come true to them that of the truth, these are the children of God, and in so God is revealed publicly, clearly to all mankind, which is our duty this time to do. So, somebody look at me. ブックエッジオフコース、マフルケンアメリカ。ンキュー。ウォルケンイン。ンキュー。ウォルケンランダ。ウォルケンガナ。ウォルカフリケンディレクト。エブリエッジオフコース。ウォラワイディレクトゥ
Today is a very great day and the match that has just been concluded is of tremendous importance and significance before God. I do not believe that there is anyone here who has got any glimpse of his importance or who has felt the impact of a man but in the sight of God is beyond words because the man had been to glorify God recall the visit of the Holy Queen Mother to our Bible and its aftermath in the life of the Bible people and their relationship to the brotherhood and to God therefore in everything that is being done, God's glory must be foremost. Nothing stands as excuse. You cannot offer an excuse on the, on the grounds of being ill. If you are ill, then, despite your illness, you make your presence felt and conspicuous. Then we live down on the people. Look, that man, though he be ill, yet he makes himself there. Though he be handicapped, in one way or the other, materially or by health-wise, or physical ailment or handicap, whatever, or be stripped of all clothing, or even be a leper, and yet you join in the group. When people see this, they say, ah, what could be so enticing that all sorts of persons are found in it, then this thing must be of a great importance. In so doing, God is glorified, God is honored. And therefore, let nothing act as a stumbling to your complying with the instructions of God. When people are out gathering, make your presence felt. So as now I do bomb can be fast. Now I should bomb the unam to see and them for the money. Now I should bomb care for them. Look <laughs> Friend, right now, let us resolve to glorify God in all our being. When we declare fasting, we glorify God. In purifying and sanctifying ourselves, in abstaining from fornication and adultery, we glorify God. In making honest conversations, we glorify God. In everything we do, realizing that that which is good we ought to do, we glorify God. Therefore, whether in our speeches, in our manner of dressing, in the way we work, and in our thought patterns, in everything we do, let us think first and foremost at glorifying God. Brethren, we have to glorify God by being humble, by being honest people, by being submissive, by being respectful, by being tolerant of people, by enduring all situations, by exercising long patience, 
in every way possible we should exhibit the tenets of God and in so doing we will be glorifying God Brethren, our Lord Jesus Christ declared that this is life eternal, that we know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. And having accomplished the work, I have glorified thee. If you know God, you will honor all men, you will respect all men, you will love all men, because it is not possible for you to say, and it be true, that you love God and yet you hate your brothers. If you love your brothers, it means it is evidence of your love for God. But what is going on now is what must obtain all over the world. That if you respect a man, you respect God. If you honor a man, you honor God. Be it in India, be it in China, anywhere in the world, this obtains true. That if you love man, you love God. But if you know God, <laughs> then explain the rationale of your hatred to your fellow man. You need to keep it. You need to keep it. Nimekamke that's all. Can you have a Brethren, that which we have to do in this kingdom is to love one another, to honor him, to reverence him, do we have nothing whatsoever to do with anything sinful. We have nothing to do with the worship of idols. We do not medicate in any form. We have nothing to do with tablets, syrups, injections, trado heads, trado medicine, all these. We have nothing to do with it whatsoever. That which we are found to associate with is the love of one for another the preference of the other to ourselves and honoring everybody, respecting everyone, giving honor to every man, in so doing, giving honor to God. This is that which we are bounded to do. So, every year, every one of us said, you know, we can go to the Brethren, in whatever way and manner, appreciation shall be done if it is all geared towards the revelation of this same glory of God, be it in, in form of shoes, clothing, um, cash, food material, shelter, whatever it is that God will wish that you show the appreciation in the form all I get towards the revelation of this same glory of God. So when you are to boy back to the council, you don't have to go and you don't to go to the council. Brethren, we do not intend to be tedious with you in the stroke of a cane is sufficient unto the wise, 
Let those who have ears to hear, let him hear. May God have blessing for his holy words. Get 
dan ken Jadi dan ken